with a ruined centuries old castle looming up on the hill of Vogue, the Slovakian village of Caktice could easily take a staring role in a gothic horror film. However, around 400 years ago, the horror was all too real, as the life of a noble woman by the name of Countess Elizabeth Bathory came to a grim end. It is not an anniversary they are likely to celebrate in Caktice, where Bathory's reign of terror still haunts locals, but for some, there is a strange fascination. I'm Viola. Hello, I'm Kevin. The big screen. Today we are in the special place in Slovakia called or Kachtice or Cachtice. We don't really know, so sorry, our Slovak friends. <laughs> we don't know how to pronounce, but anyway, we are in Cachtice uh, in the small village town in the next to the city Nove Miasto nad uh, around one hour from Bratislava. Yeah, more or less is located in the northwest uh, of uh, Slovakia, very near from the border with the Czech Republic. And probably you are wondering why we are here. I think the main reason is this character that we have here behind, as you probably have seen in the introduction. She is uh, Elizabeth Bathory, Elizabeth Bathory, better known as the Bloody Contest. And uh, I think she has a very interesting story, an interesting passage of the history that is interesting, fascinating for some people. I need to say that I'm super excited because I have been always like a kind of fascinated, don't take me wrong, but fascinated by the history. And also it had a very big influence in different kind of uh, popular cultural history. And today we would like to have like a kind of um, small documentary, like historical documentary document created by our own and at the same time connected with the cinema files because there has been used her story in many different kind of stories. So if you are curious, stay with us and we just let's go. Let's discover the life of Elizabeth Battery. We are going in the way to visit the castle of Elizabeth Battery and we can make first a, a small introduction for the people that you don't know this uh, famous character. Elizabeth Battery was born in the year 1560 in territory that nowadays is Hungary and actually she came from an old, rich and aristocratic family so she came from the high, uh, noble people family. We can comment also that some descendants from the aristocracy and from the church uh, jobs and so on are descendants from this, from this family. For example, St. Stefan the King of Poland comes from this uh, kind of dynasty. And uh, coming back again to the story of uh, Elizabeth Battery, actually she was a person with very well education because uh, besides she was speaking Hungarian, also she was master in Greek, in Latin and in German. In her early years, when she was 13 years old, uh, her parents arranged uh, the family meeting with uh, Ferenc Nadasdi, that actually is an idol, a Hungarian idol, that was fighting against the Turks. And actually it happened more or less in the year 1573, so almost when she was 13 years old, very, very young. And actually just a couple of years later, they had a wedding. The main uh, gift that she received by the husband was the castle that we are going to visit, Katsice or Chaktice. I don't know how to pronounce it properly. And uh, actually it was the place where uh, the legend of this, uh, of this person started. So we are going to explore a little bit more about it and discover the deepest and the darkest secrets of the contest. <laughs> We need to comment also that even though we are in Slovakia, in this castle of Kacice or Tsakcice, uh, the dynasty of Bathory and concretely the Contes has different castles all around different territories. Nowadays we can consider four main territories where she had the castles, but mainly here in Slovakia she was having her main activity. And we need to say that also from the marriage that she had with Ferenc Nadasdi, they had five kids in common, but the Contes didn't really have a good uh, contact with them, so almost they was living separately. The 
the year was passing here in this land and the contest always had like a kind of obsession for the blood and this kind of, of things but uh, actually according to the legend everything started when one day one of the handmaids of the contest was coming for her it was very popular that the handmaids was doing everything for their the royal and noble people and it seems that the that the woman was coming her hair too strong that she uh, combat too hard it made her feel pain and the contest in that moment she reacted in a violent way she was a woman with a lot of character hitting behind the handmaid and it seems that she hit her such hard and with the rings and so on that she provoked that the handmaid start bleeding and part of the blood, some drops of the blood, was dropping in the skin of the Countess. And then, according to the paranoid and according to the legend, people think that there starts her perdition, there starts uh, her big issue with the blood, and she starts thinking that the blood of the young uh, handmaids was actually making her look more young and much more pretty. And actually connected with that, she was always quite controlled also by her husband, because uh, with her husband she couldn't freely uh, continue with this creepy and bloody uh, hobby but actually after her husband passed away Natasdi in the year 164 definitely she started killing much more handmaids she starts getting much more crazy and always with the help of the three main helpers that she was having she uh, didn't have any more excuse to continue with her sadistic uh, rituals because she was also taking the handmaids to specific places, to specific cellars, and it wasn't just a matter of killing them and using them blood to look younger. She was also uh, making like different kind of also sexual rituals, even between the helpers and using different kind of tools to kill the handmaids. Some of the most popular one was the iron handmaid, this kind of medieval uh, tool that are different kind of sharp things inside. She was putting inside the handmaids in a way that she could cut the biggest amount of blood from them. And also, she was using different kind of tools to put in the intimate zone of the woman to also get a specific blood from that zone. So you can imagine how horrible things she was doing to uh, get, in a way or another, the big pleasure, just not just from the sexual ritual, also from the disbleeding ritual. <laughs> Finally, we arrived to the castle, this place that I was waiting to visit, actually I need to confess you for a long time. And now maybe let's talk about the last part of the story of the contest, the most important part actually. Here we are going to talk about the moment when the contest started being in real trouble. We commented that she, uh, her activity killing uh, handmaids started being more intense after the husband passed away in the year 1604. And actually we need to comment that uh, the main target that the contest was was having while she was uh, trying to, to hunt these handmaids was main, were mainly uh, young women because also she had, we need to, to make emphasis on that, she had the, the preference of taking handmaids the youngest and the prettiest as possible were the first ones, so generally the target used to be a um, woman between 14 years old to 28 almost, so in this, in this rate of age. And also we need to comment that sometimes in a she was saving a special handmaids, the youngest ones and the ones with the youngest blood for special occasions. Also it was like a special uh, ritual that she was doing. But the impor important fact is that uh, she was killing during many years, almost decades, a uh, woman. So uh, sooner or later she was running out low of uh, victims because generally the main target were the young and uh, daughters of the people from a low social uh, position like uh, daughters of farmers and people like that. So she started making uh, trips all around the different castles that she had in the different uh, countries around, like countries that nowadays are Slovakia, Czech Republic and Hungary. And we need to say that uh, during these trips she was hunting and making the rituals also in different castles, not here in, in Saktice. But uh, sooner or later she was running out of all these kind of victims and the biggest mistake that she committed is to start hunting also women from a higher social position, from people that, sooner, that somehow they were connected also with a little bit higher position. So these kind of victims start uh, catching the attention of people, people start getting more worried about them and start spreading these kind of rumors against her. Finally, in the year uh, 1610, she was condemned, she was hunted, uh, even the king in that moment of Hungary was coming to, to check it out, what was happening in the castle, they discovered the, the truth. 
and uh, she was condemned with the three of the helpers that was helping her to uh, because of this kind of crimes against the humanity. We need to say that the three helpers finally were burned alive in the town square because of uh, helping her, so they had a really horrible death. Not as horrible as the activities that they were doing, but the contest, uh, thanks, let's say, of her social position, she, they couldn't kill her, so they decided to maintain her prisoner in one of the towers of the castle that is here behind us. And she stayed alive almost four years since then. Contes Batory actually is inspiration in the pop culture. For example, music. It's a lot of bands that is creating uh, music about her, or she's inspiration to the lyrics, or the band is named her name. That is really impressive. Uh, also, it's a lot of play in theater, a lot of books about her. And of course, what is the most interesting for us, a lot of movies. Yeah, I just would like to add also that uh, connected with the books, I highly recommend one book that is called She, Dracula, literally like that. It's, it exists in the Spanish version, but I think that also in the English version as well. And also some people says that uh, Dracula was inspired on her also, the Bram Stoker uh, novel. So I think quite interesting. That is interesting, yeah. Very interesting. So connected with movies, coming back to the topic of movies, I think one of the most uh, interesting ones can be Hostel Part 2. In the video of Slovakia, we was commenting Hostel Part 1. But the Hostel Part 2 actually is not telling her story, but has like one creepy, very creepy scene that I remember that it, it impacted me quite a lot when I watched it, uh, crushed me a lot. It's uh, about the one scene where they represent this kind of addiction that she had to blood. And basically the scene is that there is a woman inside the bath that apparently is she. And in this scene, uh, she's, uh, you know, she's having a bath of the blood while she's killing another girl that is tied up in the ceiling while she's opening her bag and taking the blood and you know stuff like that that is impressive quite impressive hostel part two of ellie roth i would like to present two movies that actually is a two kind of version of the story one of them the title contest battery is about her legend and this a f movie from 1971 and the second one is the, the title is battery in the Slovak production and is talking about kind of conspiration that the actually Contest Battery didn't did the crime but the aristocrat people was telling the story to uh, kill her career we can say in this way to put her uh, down that she could lose the castles and her royalty. And another two movies that we can comment uh, connected with the contest are a little bit different we have by one side the movie Stay Alive, quite a modern movie from the year 2006 that actually is based in a kind of video game, a deadly video game that you are playing, is connected also with blood, many stages with blood, so also I think is definitely a tribute to her and where the people that is playing the video game, mainly the plot says that uh, these people can get death. So it's, a, no, it's not the common video game, it's a video game that actually can be deadly. And the other movie that we have, I think quite interesting uh, movie, we have Il Vampiri, this is the version it's quite Italian, the title, right? It means uh, the vampire in the English version. It's also a quite old movie from the year 1956. So uh, quite old movie. And actually this movie is interesting because also makes a reference to the contest, but uh, it's telling the story of the contest like in a kind of modern version. It's not the modern version of the, you know, like castles and royalty and so on. It's basically uh, talking about the crimes that the woman that has also this fascination for blood is committing. Kachtice Castle, how to reach it? It's actually so simple to come here. 
you just need to follow one road, 40 minutes walk up d through the mountains called Małe Karpaty. Of course, this is in Polish, but I think in Slovak also. And um, it's stunning views, stunning landscape uh, around, so it's quite refreshing and who pe do, to people who like mountain especially, uh, that's for sure. And when you reach the, the, the point, the castle, you can see actually just ruined. If you would like to come here and see these stunning views, you need to just pay for the entrance. For adults, 2,5 euro, and for student, 1,5. So it's not so expensive and it's worth to see it. In 1980, the, the one tower of the castle collapsed and it left just two towers. One of them is the east in the, in the eastern side, where is a tower, defensive tower with chapel. And one that I'm standing right now, actually here, is the residential uh, tower, where was in, pr in prison, um, but Countess Battery, and she died here in 1614. So you can see that this, uh, this place is kind of, you know, kind of creepy, but it's fine. Uh, what is important and quite a curious fact, 7 of August, they celebrate her birthday here. The castle in 2014 was reopened because it uh, was two years in uh, renovation. I forgot about really important information. According to the official statistics and official numbers, Contest Battery killed more than 600 handmaids. And it makes her the, the biggest, the most bloody woman assassin in history. Here we are in the end of our video. And after this, I think, kind of also class of history, a small documentary, it's the time to say goodbye. If you like our video, just click a like. Like always, support us a little bit. If you are new in our channel, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to receive always notification about our videos. And I hope that you enjoy traveling with us. Yeah, we hope that uh, you can motivate us a little bit with the likes, with the subscription and with the commentaries to keep creating these kind of videos for you. So, see you next video. Bye. Bye! One last extra thing, guys, we couldn't miss without recording this. I want to show you this, our little souvenir from the trip uh, in the castle. We, we were about uh, to leave, but we went to the souvenir store and actually we were looking for this and we decided to buy it. It cost around 7 euro. And I would like to mention the short story about this wine, the wine, official wine of the bloody contest, because uh, this wine actually is called, is the label of that battery and this wine they stopped uh, producing it in the year 2010 but they reintroduced it in the year 2014 according to the request of the tourists and the people that wanted to get it and uh, they they reintroduced it in the year 2014 also because it's the 400th anniversary of uh, the year since the contest died and of course the wine is uh, of ruby red color also we need to mention that actually is producing the cellars in the town square or in the village square in Zaktice and uh, actually these cellars were the place where the contest was torturing the people so quite a creepy way to make some marketing product about the contest <laughs>